Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Uh, we'll just give everyone a couple more minutes before we kick things off. Um, so stand by for a couple of minutes. We'll give everyone one more minute before we kick things off. Afternoon everyone, how are you doing today? Uh, my name is Janneke and I'll be running through, through today's uh, webinar. Some housekeeping activities before we get things started. So this is a live event, uh, meaning that all attendees are muted. Uh, however, we do want you to be interactive. So please raise your questions, uh, your name and your company into the Q&A panel um, and we'll monitor those. Um, and then we'll answer the questions at the end. Please note that today's session is being recorded. Uh, the recording link, presentation slides, and all the resources will be sent out to attendees after the event. If you have any issues with viewing the screen or audio, please let us know in the Q&A panel, uh, and one of our moderators will assist you. Before we kick things off, uh, just an acknowledgement of country would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which you meet today and Taurus would like to pay our respects to the elders past and present. So today's webinar uh, is focused on taking back control of Microsoft Teams. It's a pretty interesting quote there from Satya Nadala. There are now over 4.5 billion teams meeting minutes every day. Uh, the agenda for today's proceedings, uh, I'll do an introduction uh, and welcome. I'll touch on some of the team's momentum, um, how we got here today, um, some of the challenges we have with Microsoft Teams and ultimately how we solve those challenges and take back control of Teams with TELUS. Uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end um, for you to answer, for you to propose questions and I can answer them. Uh, ultimately, we'll then close the event off. So an introduction about Antares. Antares, uh, we've been around for about 14 years now. We are a professional services business. Um, we are aligned with Microsoft and achieve the highest level of accreditation from a Microsoft perspective. We are both a managed and gold partner. Over those 14 years, we've developed a lot of intellectual property uh, and packaging solutions together, allowing us to rapidly deploy those IP solutions to customers um, and targeted towards specific business use cases. As I touched on before, we are strategically aligned with Microsoft. Um, we have three key practices here at Antares, the modern workplace practice, data solutions uh, and application development. <coughs> Those three practice areas, modern work, so think everything from the collaboration aspect of the Microsoft stack. So think SharePoint Online, uh, SharePoint Accelerators, Teams, uh, Yammer, process automation through the Power Platform uh, and doc document management. Application development is where we started, so building custom bespoke apps for companies' needs. So think around bots, uh, app modernization projects and integration with other third party and critical business systems. The last practice that we have is the data and AI practice. So everything we do today uh, is an opportunity for us to capture data. How do we store that data? Uh, where do we house it? Ultimately, how do we then use that data to make smarter, uh, more insightful decisions around our business? So leveraging a tool like Power BI to visualize all the data that we have. I suppose today with the modern workplace and, and where we're going, the lines are almost blurred between the three practices. All three of our practices work 
closely together to deliver solutions to our customers. And that's where the innovation practice sits across all three um, of our key practice areas. So developing IP solutions out of the box um, that we can deploy to customers. And it's all we'll touch on today with one of our solutions, TELUS. <laughs> At Antares, we believe in the power of partnership. As I touched on before, we are a Microsoft Gold partner. We are a founding member of the Cloud Collective. We work with other organizations that provide value to our business and ultimately provide better outcomes for our customers. Telstra is one of those partners, uh, leveraging initiatives and funding programs like the technology funds to help fund a lot of these initiatives. And also Nintex, one of our technology partners around delivering process automation um, to our customers. <coughs> Who is the Cloud Collective? The Cloud Collective is an alliance of three Microsoft Gold partners with complementary technology and skill sets that ultimately allow us to provide the end-to-end -end offering on the entire Microsoft technology stack. Uh, our goal is to service the mid-market um, by providing the deep expertise of a boutique agency and the broad knowledge and muscle of a major consultancy. Um, between the three uh, Alliance members, we have 12 Microsoft Gold competencies. Uh, again, once allowing us to deliver on the entire Microsoft technology stack. <clears throat> Going together to deliver interview solutions. So Antares is where we'll spend most of our time today uh, looking at SharePoint solutions, um, Microsoft team solutions, data warehousing, Power BI. Um, that's where Antares plays. ICOM, our, our unified communications partner, uh, bring to life uh, the, the communication side of Skype for Business Teams, uh, user enablement and training, and now also the automated meeting room experience. Uh, ICOM, our, our infrastructure partner, um, allowing us to leverage the expertise in the identity, security, uh, and compliance area that offers. Um, also things around modern device management uh, is where uh, Quorum can assist. So between the three Alliance members, we're able to service the entire Microsoft 365 our stack. <coughs> Take back control of teams with Teller. So this is where we'll spend most of uh, today. Um, before we get into a demonstration, let me set the scene of where we've got to and how we've got to this position. So the way we work has changed. We know that teamwork is critical focus of most modern workplace. That's just the way work gets done. Now, and the companies that invest in collaboration are more likely to be high performing um, than companies that don't. While companies are unique and have their own identities, we see common trends in how teamwork has changed. Let's explore those common trends. There are two times more collaboration that are happening. What does that mean? It means that users and individuals are more likely to collaborate in twice as many teams, not only within their specific team, but also cross-functional teams throughout the business. No longer does just a marketing individual work in their team, but they may have to interact with other parts of the business. Um, and people spend most of their time, up to 80% of that time, collaborating in those teams to get work done. <clears throat> people need to connect with one another, both internal, external, remotely, across organization um, from different locations and different time zones. So no longer is collaboration happening in a single location like an office space. Collaboration happens everywhere, anywhere, at any time. So how do we provide the tools for us to be more productive, um, covering off those different element, elements? <coughs> we have a very diverse work, uh, workforce. For the first time in history, we have five generations in the workforce. What does that mean? It means that people have different expectations, preferences, skill sets. An example of this is individuals might like in face-to-face -face meetings. Other individuals might like email. Others might like persistent chat like we experienced with Microsoft Teams. So how do we provide a platform that allows us to use our skill sets and our preferences to collaborate and work with one another? <clears throat> the last step is around employee engagement. In Australia, only 14% of employees are engaged. And as we move to a more flexible and remote workforce, how do we actually enable us to be more engaged with one another? From research that shows that companies that have up to 70% of the employees engaged is more likely to be high performing and successful. 
This leads us to the Microsoft Teams and the Teams momentum that we've seen, not only for the last 12 months, but in particular, probably for the last eight to 10 months, um, pre-pandemic and heading into where we are today. Some interesting stat that we have is 57% of Australians use video in meetings. Going back to the previous um, trend that we saw around needing to have employee engagement, I think it's really interesting that only behind Canada, Australia like to see and have video on in meetings. Uh, it's a pretty powerful uh, way to connect with one another. There are now over 500,000 organisations that use Teams uh, actively. Teams is supported in 53 different languages. Microsoft now have 20 customers with 100,000 or more active daily users. The last stat was only released a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 115 million daily active users now leverage Teams. If we think back to February pre-pandemic, that was at 25 million uh, active users. So you can see the large growth that we've seen in the space of uh, 10 months. <clears throat> I'd like to share with you some additional statistics based on some research that was done a while ago now in 2017, but I think it's more relevant today as we head in towards a remote workforce. 80% of millennials say that workplace technology will influence the decision to join a company. Uh, pretty interesting to see. Um, next one is 42% of current employers, employees say that they will change employers if the technology does not meet their needs. Uh, again, making sure that we have the right technologies in place to retain the best talent, not only attract them. Uh, the last statistic is around 6% is the average amount of time spent each day by a user searching for information. If we multiply that by 365 days in a year, that's roughly about 15 days per week alone looking for information. So how do we make sure that users are finding the right information more effectively and efficiently to, to be more productive? <clears throat> the last little bit of research I'll share is uh, that was, was around um, early this year during the pandemic from Gartner um, around the remote working. So 88%, nearly 90% of organizations have encouraged or required employees to now work from home um, pre um, during the pandemic. Probably the more interesting stat is 75% of CFOs say they expect to move previously on-site employees to remote post COVID-19. So what does that actually mean for your business? How are you enabling your employees to be more productive? Do you have the right frameworks in place for them to access the right tools, not only the Microsoft, but other business applications in place. What does it mean for your organization from a training and change management perspective? Are your staff properly trained to be able to be most, most effective at home? I know we're going through that transition at the moment. If, what does it now look like the new norm heading into the new year? That leads us to today's team's challenges. So we have eight challenges that we commonly see from our from, from customers, from our experiences, from speaking with Microsoft. So let's go through them now. Sprawl and duplication. So Microsoft Teams being your central hub for collaboration. We want users to collaborate freely using the platform. We want them to be their most productive, but we want to find that balance being, being between control and freedom ultimately trying to stop duplication, sprawl, multiple locations for storage and creating multiple locations for sources of truth of information. Security and compliance. The world has dramatically changed over the past few months and with that shift, we've started to enable more cloud-based services. So how do we make sure that we're driving communication and collaboration within an organization, but ultimately keeping our staff members safe and our data secure? what tools to use when. Today more than ever, we have a greater choice of what tools to do our job. So how do we know? How do we decide on what those tools are? How do we make sure we have users happier uh, with the technology they use to be more productive and, and, and creative? No provisioning and standardization of, uh, no approvals and standardization of provisioning. IT is drowning complexity. They have so many systems to manage. So how do we simplify the process of provisioning new services uh, within the Microsoft stack? Easy teams, administration and management. Is there a centralized location and a simplified process to manage the entire life cycle of teams? 
finding the right information, going back to the point of how do we find the right information more effectively and efficiently. As we have access to all these cloud-based applications and services that we consume information from anywhere at any time, how do we make sure that we're finding and sharing the right information? Training and change management. With all the changes that happen to technology at such a rapid pace, how do we keep up? How do staff members keep up with the changes in process, the changes in technology, so they can be the most productive uh, that they can be? And ultimately, uh, how do we gain insights for decision making? As I touched on before, it's uh, a place for us to capture data about how we interact with one another. So how do I gain actionable insights to make smarter, more strategic decisions about my technology and how my, how my employees are working together? You can see here I've broken up into different color codings, uh, which will make more sense next. So how do we solve these challenges today uh, with TELUS? So we've broken up into three categories, we have three distinct solutions, um, and we'll look at challenges one through to five uh, for governance, the yellow circles, challenges six and seven through ask and analytics for eight. What is TELUS? TELUS is collaboration with the guardrails up. TELUS will be your answer to Microsoft Teams governance, your central hub for creating, managing and governing teams. Most importantly, integrated into the fabric of your Microsoft Teams app. Going back to that point about change management, we want to make sure it's easy as possible for people to, to access this application. So what makes TELUS great? This is some research that we've done internally around some of the features that TELUS will meet out of the box uh, compared to Microsoft Teams. So you can see here there's a number of things that Microsoft Teams can do out of the box, which is fantastic, but there's a number of things that TELUS will help go above and beyond uh, that Microsoft can do out of the box itself. Now let's jump into a demo. As you can see here, this is my Microsoft Teams environment. I'm using the web browser version uh, as I'm on Teams on my desktop client, um, but this will be the same experience as it would be in your normal desktop or client. As you can see here, through the normal left-hand side, you'll have all your different applications. I think the key thing to note is we're not trying to change the way people work. We want them to leverage Teams for what it was designed for. We want them to leverage their chat functionality, have the one-on-one -on -one chat, we want them to access their teams like they normally would um, to, to collaborate with one another and share information. Um, if calls are enabled, allow them to make phone, um, voice and phone, phone calls itself. So typically we know if we want to go through the process of creating a new team, we would go through the join now uh, and create a team and follow the prompts there. I suppose going through this process, it doesn't capture much metadata or templates of, uh, of uh, applied to that team. So through the left hand navigation, we can navigate through the TELUS application. So the first thing you'll notice as part of TELUS is the TELUS dashboard. The TELUS dashboard will showcase a number of different features about that team, uh, about the teams. The first thing you'll notice is uh, you'll get to toggle between my workspaces and public workspaces. It's a nice, easy and quick way to see the, the workspaces that you are a part of. Uh, and also the public workspaces you have access to by clicking through the thing. You can also see as part of the dashboard, you'll see each team has a number of bits of metadata associated with that team, giving you insight into what that team is. If we go back to the Teams tab, you'll see those teams still exist here. However, you don't get uh, the metadata associated with it. So you don't get the insight into what that team is out of the box. Heading back to the TELUS app, there are a number of different ways you can search for the team. You can still can search for the team here via the search bar. So if I type in my, you bring up the my benefits. Or if I type in create, it'll bring up the create. So you can see there's a number of different ways to search the team. Each team, as I touch on, has a number of different pieces of metadata associated with it. So which department does it belong to? Who is the owner or the executive sponsor of this team itself? What is the status? Is this team active, inactive, archived, deleted? What is the team type? So this is a template which I'll touch on in a little bit. Uh, what is that template associated with it? Um, and what is the classification of that team as well? Is it public, confidential, general, 
are highly confidential, as you can see. So a number of different bits of metadata that you can see associated with each team, which you don't normally get out of the box. Creating a new team is simple. Um, you'll follow the tab um, here to hit the new button. The key thing to note here is when you click on create a new team is we're taking you through a wizard style approach, asking you questions about why you want a team as opposed to technical questions behind it. So what is the purpose of your workspace? In here, we have four different templates um, that we can choose from. A team template, a project template, a community template, and an ideation template. These templates are designed to meet most of your organization's collaboration requirements. These templates will also have different associated services that will be provisioned in the background automatically by selecting them. Let's go through the process of creating a project template. From here, you can access the workspace classification uh, itself. So the workspace classification is essentially applying classification to that team and then the associated data associated with it as well. So by applying this workspace classification, you'll start leveraging your Office 365 sensitivity labels um, that will ultimately apply rules to each individual space. For example, if you created a highly confidential team for, a, um, for your leadership team on a new project that they're working on, this, this highly confidential private team will ultimately have rules that may um, that will automatically be applied, such as not being able to download content uh, from that team, not being able to share content externally, um, applying different retention uh, and backup policies to those things. So leveraging uh, what you have out of the box or through other solutions as well as part of this um, workspace classification. Once you apply classification, uh, to each team, what we'll do is we'll use general for now. You'll be able to access the metadata that is required. So more information about the, the workspace itself. This information will then be shown in the dashboard. So in this instance, I will uh, roll, I'll create a team. Um, and then the description is the team. Um, who is the business unit? So who does this team belong to? Uh, this team will belong to marketing and media. Uh, the business owner is the sponsor of the team as well. By default, if you don't add a business owner, that will then uh, filter out as the owner of the team. But for this instance, we'll leave it as that. I'll add in Jenny as a required person. I will also add in Peter. And then create workspace. So from there, you'll start going through uh, provisioning the associated services with each individual template. That will be the tabs, the channels, uh, the classifications, the folder structure, um, anything around planner, potentially around uh, your shared OneNote. Start, start provisioning all of the different services in the background. What I'll do is it'll take a couple of minutes to provision. There we go. As you can see, it's provisioning. Um, I've added to a team as being an owner. Um, it is almost there. And it is done. So if I look back at the dashboard, that team will now be created. If I then go to the Teams tab, that team will now then be created with the associated assets. It'll take a while for all the services to get created. It's just how, uh, it take, how long it takes. But in the meantime, I'll show you an existing um, channel and, and a workspace. So this workspace here, Teams Rollout, um, is a project template. As you can see here, as part of the project template, you will have all the associated um, tabs created. You'll have the files tab created um, for sharing content within the team chat. You'll have a SharePoint list created as your stakeholders. So for as a project, who is the, the key stakeholders and how do we contact them? You'll have a shared calendar, really important for a project to have a shared calendar to make sure you understand when daily standups are or deliverables or timelines. You have the quick links um, associated. 
anything related to the project is going to be really easy and it needs to be really accessible uh, for the team members. Your document management structure, really important to have a consistent document management structure of how we store project documents in this instance. Here, this is an example of the, of the folder structure that we use. Um, typically, most projects will go through four phases, planning, design, build, and go live. This is exactly how um, providing that governance around document management. We'll also provision a notebook um, in OneNote, allowing you to share notes quickly and easily between uh, required team members. And the last one is around a planner. So provisioning a planner board, uh, allowing us to keep tracks of tasks, which is really important for um, projects. You'll notice here as well on the left-hand side, you'll also provision different channels for different elements of the team. So here as part of a project, typically we'll have a issues register allowing us to chat about specific issues that are coming up um, within that team. Again, provisioning different services um, and different requirements each for each individual um, channel. So the issues again has the issues registered from before and also the project documents library as well. You'll have a meeting um, section, a place for us to have weekly meetings and, and a record for us to capture all of the information required around a meeting specific to this project. And lastly, the risks as well. So as you can see here, this is um, how the template is created in the background. I will jump back to TELUS now to start talking about the management of teams and the ongoing life cycle. So as you can see here, each team has that metadata we talked about. Um, you'll see a, diff a little bit of options uh, around here through the ellipsis, but essentially here we get to start seeing some status. So the status here um, will allow us to see if that team is inactive. An inactive status means that there's been no activity within a team and the associated services for 30 days. So that, that will automatically drive to inactive. From there, it gives us a nice dashboard of all the inactive teams, allowing us to send notifications to Peter. Hey, Peter, this team here asked payroll. Is it still relevant? No one has used this team in the last 30 days. Is it something we can go through for recertification? Um, allowing us to then stop the duplication teams if we know they're inactive. From there, we can start driving the lifecycle management. We can either edit, archive or delete that team. By having this metadata here, we're also able to leverage any workflow solution over the top to start driving this process as an automated feature too. Perfect, so that is the provisioning aspect of TELUS. If we go and think back to um, the ask component, challenges six and seven, finding the right information when necessary, uh, and also the change management adoption. This is where another solution of ours as part of TELUS, the ask solution comes into play. So there's two key scenarios in where the ask solution will work. The ask solution will be deployed again, like a tab um, as an application on the left-hand side. There will be, so scenario one is when you wanna have a one-to-one -one conversation with the ask bot. This is a place where it's a bit more personal and a question that you want to ask that doesn't necessarily need to be shared with everyone else. The other scenario is in a team environment where if we look at this one, for example, from an ask IT perspective, this is where you want to ask a question that everyone can see, but also you want others to promote and also uh, provide insight and feedback, ultimately providing better answers. So the purpose of the Ask Bot is essentially to build a dynamic knowledge base and also then answer questions back based on those questions. So finding the right information, going back to how do we find the right information based uh, on what we're trying to find. So me as a user, I might uh, go to the Ask IT team um, and ask a question specific to IT. So I can tag the bot and ask what, how do I um, add a printer? By asking the question, the bot will search its knowledge base uh, in the background and ultimately provide me an answer if it knows the answer. There are a couple of different scenarios in which uh, it will respond to if it doesn't know the answer, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. As you can see here, the Ask Bot knows the answer here uh, and tells me and gives me a brief description uh, of how to do that. Uh, it also gives me a confidence score rating. So this confidence score rating is a combination of all the feedback that we receive from everyone that has asked it uh, ask a question over a period of time. If I tag this is helpful, this will then go back 
and let the bot know that this is the right answer, uh, ultimately improving the confidence score over time. Um, if it, you believe it is not the correct answer, you're able to go and hit tag expert. Let's try another question. I make a new Teams meeting. To this instance, I'm asking the Askbot, as a user, how do I make a new Teams meeting or create a new Teams meeting? Um, this comes back to the adoption side of things, allowing a user to then ask a question, uh, pointing us to the direction of where things need to live. So you can see here, it thinks it knows the question, it's answered it back, um, but we look at it and once we read it, we realize it actually isn't the right question. It isn't the right answer. So in this instance, what we'll do is we'll go and tag an expert to let them know, to let us know that we believe this is the wrong answer. So what it does is it tags the owners of the team, myself being an owner, but also Jenny as well. Me, Aaron, as a owner, I can go and then answer that question. Once I know what the question is, I can just reply. This is one I prepared earlier. And I'll hit save. I can then go and train the bot to learn that question. Go. So it is now saving that question and there you go. That answer will now be updated. It does take a little bit of time. Um, I think every five minutes it's set to refresh uh, and learn it. So once that comes back, we'll be able to ask that question again. So that is the ask solution itself. So what I might do is I'll go back and cont I'll continue on and I'll come back and ask this question in a couple of minutes to see uh, how it's learned the question. So the last thing around the um, a last thing around the uh, and the the Telus solution is the analytics piece. So how do we start gaining actual insights into how our teams are creating and collaborating with one another? So. Here is a dashboard that we've created, the Power BI uh, dashboard. You can see here a summary of all the questions and answers. So here you can see over the last, uh, our last handful of weeks, there have been 200 questions asked um, within the teams. The bot or the Ask Solution has answered 29 of them. Um, 24 of these answers have been helpful. Uh, 66 of these answers have been uh, answered by an expert, so requiring an expert to actually answer these questions. Um, however, probably the more alarming stat is around 105 of these questions have been unanswered. So what is the reason behind these questions being unanswered? Is this something that we need to provide additional training on uh, to our SMEs or to our owners on how to potentially answer these questions better? So you can start seeing here, we start getting insights into how we are managing questions and answers. You can see here over time, you will see the bot here, um, number of confidence over time. So over the course of the time, you'll see that there is more helpful than there is uh, the bot answering the questions. You can also see here the outcomes over time. So when a question is asked, does it go unanswered or does it go answered as helpful? So you can see here, as we start, the questions being answered, the, they go unknown, they get answered. There's probably a little bit of a spike here of unanswered questions, um, probably from a testing to show the, the number, but you can see here then as we get towards here, this is exactly where the answers are starting to be helpful. Um, so think about this over a course of a period of 12 months, as the bot learns and as we teach it more, uh, and as people interact and drive more from the bot, you'll start seeing more consistent answers um, throughout the throughout its responses. You also get some insight into the teams as well. So you can look at the Ask IT team. Within here, you see Aaron has been the most active asking 24, 26 different questions and answers. Um, Cameron has also been active here as well, as well as Damien, Johnny and Jason. Uh, you'll also get to see a little bit more around the types of questions that are being answered for each individual team. 
again, providing us insight into the types of questions that we're seeing within our organization, almost giving us a pulse of what we need to make smarter decisions on. Those answers and question pairs feedback into our knowledge base. So you can see here, these are the types of questions that have been answered uh, over time. So when the question happened, the time, the answer status, did it go answered? Did it go unanswered? Who was it answered by? Was it answered by the R spot or was it answered by SME such as Aaron here? So providing this insight into us allows us to start making better decisions on um, how we then potentially drive that change management within an organization. We might understand that, do you know what? We have a lot of people asking us, how do we make teams calls? How, how do we make uh, set up teams meetings? This might be something that we decide to run more of a formal training session for everyone, enabling us to understand how we actually better drive teams meetings. Or do we record a video, um, publish it on stream, allowing a user to then ask the question and point it to that video. Um, the beauty of stream now is that everything is transcribed, allowing the bot to understand the trans uh, the transcript of the thing, delivering them to a timestamp. Let's go back to the ask section here and ask this question one more time. It should know the answer. Here you go. Click on the calendar app on the left-hand side uh, view, and it also gives me a link that I've added to, which will take me to um, some training material uh, here that I've added. As you can see, it's a nice, easy way for us to drive change management, adoption, and training. But think about the use cases we can drive here. There's a number of different use cases we could drive um, from this solution. We've seen organizations leverage it for an Ask HR um, or an adoption bot or potentially a service request ticket. If I as a user uh, wanted to type, my camera is broken, how do I actually submit a service request ticket? The bot has the ability then to capture that information via a form and ultimately, if required, integrate with that service service desk ticket, this ticketing system, filling in the form generating a ticket and feeding that information back to a user. So we can start seeing the power of how the bot can help automate a lot of different workflow processes um, through the Teams interface, ultimately driving us to leverage Teams better. That's it from a demo perspective. I'll share back a couple more slides. So what's on the roadmap? As we touched on in the roadmap, essentially, um, this is a solution that we're constantly updating based on um, feedback and information from customers. So Teams Health Rating. So what is a Teams Health Rating? Ultimately, we're providing a traffic light system, providing a red, amber, or red rating to each individual team. What we're going to be looking at is the team size. If the team has no owners or too few many owners, less than two, too many people in a private channel. Um, the team structure, is there any channels in the general tab? Is there too many channels? Um, the engagement and adoption rating. Are we seeing engagement within the team? Are people using it? Are there services within that team that are not being used as well? We'll also look at the security as well. Is there a security, is there a setting around guest access but we have no guests? Or um, is there any other security ratings that we have around that? Custom permissions. Is there any custom permissions from there? Is the team's missing metadata? Um, or do we have any recommendations around expiring policies and procedures that may have an expiry date to them as well? So providing you um, a different rating system around that teams, again, helping drive that life cycle management and management of teams itself. Self-service templates. So at the moment, we have four template systems, uh, four standardized templates. Ultimately, what we want to do is allow you to create your own. So creating your own metadata fields, creating your own um, fields that you need to, to adhere to. Um, so creating your own specific templates to your unique requirements. This is something that's on the roadmap uh, as well. New governance features. So new governance features around naming conventions, the deletion and restore capabilities improved around that. Teams auto renewal and expiry. So applying that 
uh, automation around uh, recertification of teams, um, integration with other Office 365 apps as well. Um, new security features, so new features around how we, vis how we can visualize and see the external sharing and information of teams. Who has access in a team? Who has access to specific documents in a team, uh, et cetera? Inbuilt approval workflows. So at the moment, Telus out of the box has the ability to leverage a third party workflow system, but we want to leverage the Microsoft workflow platform as well. So this one is probably one that's going to be coming out very shortly. It is around inbuilt approval workflows, leveraging the Power Apps and Flow system as well. And UI updates. So again, improving the UI to consist taking feedback from customers uh, and feedback around how we improve the UI. I think this is something that will improve the experience around creating your own custom templates, adding your own metadata around that as well. So that is probably where most of the improvements we made around the next steps. And that is it for me today. Um, I'll have a quick look at the questions. And we'll see if we have any quotes. All right, so one of the questions we have here is are there are these questions built in by the company or is it pre-built knowledge base? It's a good question. Um, so ultimately we have a set of pre-built um, questions that we've gathered over time from customers uh, and from many deployments. Those questions will be part of the solution. So ultimately you can um, have those questions. We'll work with you to populate them as well. Um, but there is a, obviously a degree of working with you to understand how we actually populate more unique and more uh, required questions to you. If you have a uh, commonly or frequently asked questions page, as a lot of organizations do within specific departments, it is very straightforward for us to help leverage that and, imp and import those into the Ask solution. Um, a question from Sarah, how are these solutions licensed? Good question as well, Sarah. Um, these solutions are licensed on a SaaS based offering. So it is a subscription based um, license. That subscription based license will also include support and ongoing maintenance and the rollout of all the new features that I talked about as well. So feel free to get in touch um, with those. Another question is uh, this looks good when creating new teams. But what do you recommend if teams have been in existence for over a year? Also, how do you um, propagate organically with a few controls? That's a good question, really good question. So um, something we have as part of the solution as well is the ability to um, add existing teams as part of TELUS. So what that looks like is TELUS will automatically understand the, question, the teams that are already in, in, in existence. Um, it will then feed that information into the TELUS dashboard. Um, but the TELUS dashboard will show some missing fields, especially around the metadata that needs to be required. It will then ask the owner of that team to go and fill in the specific metadata fields, allowing us to then input them and drive the workflow process as part of it. The other question is again around what happens to existing teams. So the same thing. So existing teams will already be, uh, will automatically be picked up. Um, as part of the TELUS dashboard, and it will just require the users to then go and um, apply metadata to those specific teams. Another question uh, received is, can you connect the RSpot to multiple data sources? Of course, absolutely. Um, the RSpot has its own knowledge base and data source, but we've seen a number of different customers connect the RSpot to multiple databases or data sources. An example of that is uh, we've seen for HR is that customers want users to leverage um, or connect to their HR system, allowing a user to ask, what is my leave balance? Um, ultimately pulling back information from that HR system and feeding back to the user around what is my leave balance. Um, so there are a number of different ways we can leverage uh, different data sources uh, that the RSpot can then go and connect to and bring back answers to as well.
Any other questions? OK, perfect. Um, oops. What's next? So what's next? What options do you have? So before we wrap up, if there's no other questions, um, a couple of different things we can help with. So if teams are not fully deployed, uh, but want to be, find out, reach out, find out what a planning engagement looks like. Find out how it can help you uh, understand how to roll out teams and apply the appropriate governance policies around. If you are fully deployed uh, within teams, reach out as well. We'd love to assess the challenges you face, understand how many of the eight challenges you currently face today in your organization, and understand how we can apply TELUS to meet those challenges. The last one is Microsoft got a number of different accelerator programs that Antares and the Cloud Collective are a part of. Uh, ultimately trying to improve your investment in the technology stack. So again, reach out to us. We're more than happy to check what what programs you qualify for uh, and how we can ultimately help drive your investment in the Microsoft technology stack. Apart from that, thank you all for your time today. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time for us to uh, go through TELUS and some of the team's challenges we, we are currently facing and seeing in the market. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to all of us. The documentation, the slide deck, and the link to the presentation uh, and webinar will be sent out to all the attendees. So again, thank you again for your time uh, and have a good day.